So now let's start talking about some of the UI nav widget events that you might need. So let's open the UI nav widget that we created. Let's go to the event graph and I'm going to right click and add the on select event. This event is called whenever a UI nav component is selected. So if I select the first component, I can add the on clicked event. And if this event is called with this component as its parameter, it is the equivalent of this event being called. So you can use either one of these. You also have the on start select and the on stop select, which are in turn equivalent to the on pressed and the on released event. You then also have the on navigate event, which is called whenever navigation changes from one UI nav component to another. And I'm going to demonstrate it right now. So I'm going to do print string and I'm going to append, say navigated from. and I'm going to get the from components display name and the two components display name and now if I play the level you can see it being I'm just going to add a space here to, for it to be easier to read So you can see navigated from nothing to the first the first option and then from w component 2 to the first one and yeah you can see it prints the names of the buttons that it's being navigated to Now in order to show how to switch from one widget to another I'm going to duplicate this widget And I'm going to put the buttons here more close to the right. And I'm going to make them a bit smaller. I'm also going to change the text to option 456. And this is going to be our second widget. And now I'm going to show you how you should transition from one widget to another. So in this case, I'm going to use the general on select event. So anytime any button in this widget is uh, clicked on or selected, I'm going to navigate and add this second widget to the screen. And the way that you do this is by using the go to widget event. You should not be using add to viewport inside of a UI nav widget to navigate to another UI nav widget. You should only use that whenever the first widget is added to the screen, which is what's uh, what we're already doing in the player controller. So I'm going to set the class to my widget two, and I'm going to, as you can see, remove parent is not set to true. So I'm going to set it to true. And this will basically remove the this widget from the viewport when it adds this second widget. So let's try that. I'm going to add the widget to the screen and I'm going to click the first option. And as you can see, we navigate to the second widget. I also want to tell you about the on return event. So whenever the player presses the return key or the back key, this on return event will be called. By default, this event will just call return to parent. Not to be confused with remove from parent. This is a default Unreal Engine function and you should not be using this function when handling UINF widgets. You should always use return to parent. So. I'm going to override the on return event 
uh, but I'm just going to add the normal implementation. Now I'm going to play the game again. And when I press the return key, you can see that the menu disappears. However, you may not want to do this for every menu. So let's say that I don't want this menu to be returned from. I can do this in one of two ways. I can override the on return event and just not do anything. And this will override the initial implementation. And now even if I press the escape key many times, the, the menu will not be removed from the screen. Instead of doing this, I can also just go to the widgets class defaults and set allow remove if root to false. And this will not allow me to return from this widget only if there is no other widget on the stack. So I'm also going to press the escape key and nothing happens. To be clear, you should only override the on return event if you want to do something else other than it being returned to the previous widget. In 99% of cases, you will not need to touch this event at all. Now, I want to tell you a bit how the go to widget node works. Basically, the way that the plugin works is when you call go to widget, it's basically creating a first in last out stack where the first widget, which is the my widget, will be on top of the stack. And then when I call go to widget, I'm going to add my widget two to the bottom of the stack. And then when I press the return action, it's going to remove the last widget in the stack, which in this case, it will be the widget two. And then if I press it again, it will remove the next widget, which would be my widget. So I'm just going to show that happening. If I press option one and then go to the second widget, if I now press return, I'm going to go back to the first widget and that's it. You can also use the go to build widget node, which is the same thing as the go to widget node, except it allows you to first create the widget and then potentially pass some exposed parameters that you want to populate. And then you just have to pass the return value of that function into the new widget function. So I'm going to select, for instance, my widget two, and then I can plug it into new widget and that's it. Another thing that I want to address is how to navigate from one component to another manually. And I'm going to use the construct event for that. So I'm going to add a one second delay. And after that, I'm going to force navigation to the second button. And I'm just going to do that by calling set focus. So as you can see, if I now play and wait for one second, navigation will then go to option two and I can continue navigating the options 